This is an exercise for the study of Gnostic sense. Here's one facet of the sense of touch. It just means to know things by their shape. It comes from the Greek. And you can make up as many sets as you like. You find your children enjoying it. And you start with things to rather large. I haven't got many left. But I found that uh, a set of little cubes and little cylinders was very good to start with. See. And the children, I had about eight of each to begin with. And the squares were yellow and the cylinders were this, this uh, magenta sort of color. Each shape must be a different color. And the child would feel them. And sort them by touch. And first, he did them with his eyes open. And once he understood the exercise, then of course he wore the blindfold. And when he's finished, the two piles, you see, the color would show whether he had made a mistake or not. I must get some more of these made. Now that you will find plenty of things in the environment that you can use for making up the sets. And the best way to keep them is on any little tray and whatever you're having in a central dish and then smaller dishes to sort them into. You want to buy attractive dishes. At home I have really got rather more attractive ones. And in here, I have two different types of macaroni. There's a, one that's rather like a shell, you see, and this one is a tube, like a tube. And they're very different to feel. You can dye one shape very easily, just to put a few drops of food coloring in water, Soak these for about half a very quickly, only for, because they go soggy if you really soak them, and you can turn one set of sort of pink or red or something with food coloring, and then they can see by the color when they're finished. But they just sit there with the blindfold, and there are many different shapes in macaroni. At least we get many different shapes in England. That would be good do for one set. And then here's a set in which I have three different shapes of wooden beads. See, a large round red one, a smaller round green one, and a ellipsoid purple one. See. So again, the child would sit with the blindfold and he would sort them by size or by shape <coughs> into the different into the different parts. And if you think he's pretty good at remembering which part that he can always push up the blindfold and look if he forgets. And uh, of course, if he puts one in the wrong place, then he would see by the color when he'd finished. Now, those three things are fairly large. And as he is able to do it, 
you can make sets that are more difficult. Now the objects can vary in size or they can vary in shape. Yeah, these are beads again. And you will feel that this one has quite, is quite different in shape to this pink one. And then very different again to the green one. Those three are very different in shape. So I would have three little pots again. And the child was just so. Tray, I have buttons, two different sizes. You, you get buttons that are very different in shape, or you get buttons that are very different in size. And perhaps you give him just two kinds at first, and then you give him three or four kinds. Uh, this is much more difficult. I have, uh, what did you call them? Black eyed beans? What do you call them? Black eyed peas. Black -eyed peas. And, and this is a dried pea. Gabanthus, I don't know what you call them. And uh, all that, uh, the little haraco bean. Do you have haraco beans? They're, they've got a very, very, they're about this size and shape, but they're, very, very, they're wide and they're very smooth. Navy beans. Navy beans. Well, there are many different kinds of beans, aren't there? And you can have two or three kinds. And this one, certainly, you'll find is much more difficult. It's really very difficult. Why don't your children really enjoy doing this? You know, you can make up different sets for them. And the children get so good that, you know, some of them like it so much that you find in the end they can separate rice and barley or they can separate two different types of rice. Yes, yes, they have very, yes, they really get very delicate things. You know. Oh, we must bring in two types of rice and see what we can do. Yeah, you've got that long rice and the... <coughs> what do you call them? Long grain rice and short grain rice. We call them. The pearl is very different. The pearl rice. The pearl barley. Yeah. The pearl barley. Yes. Wild rice would be different. Oh, you say you live on a farm, you can have oats and corn, can't you? Oh, much easier. No, I'm just saying. So you think of it. You can think of anything, you see, really. Depends on. But the uh, grocery shops are very good sources. Beads, buttons, shells. If you, if you can get them, you know, two types of shell that are different in shape, but each kind about the same size. Another thing that is a big thing is walnuts and Brazil nuts. You see, or walnuts and, uh, what do you call the hazelnut? you call it a hazelnut or a Barcelona nut? Filbert, you call it. Like a rock, uh, rock rock. Well, rocks, you can, simply can't get rocks all the same size. We're not doing texture here. We're doing size and shape. And it would be impossible, really, to do it with rocks because you can't get them all, uh, four or five, exactly the same. 
<coughs> you can get four or five nuts, you see, walnuts, and you choose ones about the same size. And Brazil nuts, they're quite a different shape. Those seashells. Yes, we, yes, I did. I think we mentioned shells. But you must get a shell, like a cowry shell. You can get cowry shells to about the same size. And then do you have a periwinkle shell? Mm -hmm. If it's what I mean, then you can get a lot about the same size. They do vary a bit, so you choose them for size, and they, they would mix well because they're very different in shape. Right. So these are sets you can make up for yourself. But they get rather pretty dishes, you know. Mine tend to be, I have much prettier ones at home, and I have very pretty round, plain round trays, which are nice, but these trays are nice. You want a plain tray. Corny Business, there's, no, there's no approximate. Uh, if it's beads, it depends how many they wear in your necklace before it broke. Can <laughs> 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 you ever go beyond three different sizes or shapes? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Uh, I haven't got one here, but I've, I've had them as, uh, with as many as five different things. You know, you put whatever, and sometimes you'll get children who are very keen on this, you know, and really enjoy it. Then there is another exercise. And you have a little bag, and you fill it with approximately 20 things. Not too large and very different, like a small pencil, a reel of cotton, a, a small teaspoon, a, a quarter, a piece of chalk a large button. You can easily find about 20 things around there. In place, you know. And then, this is a group game. Your children sit in a little semicircle. And you sit in here with a table beside you. And for the first day, you take everything out of the bag and show the things to the children. And you probably don't get further than that because they will want to come up and look at them and handle them and know what children are like. So that's what you probably do the first day. And then the next time you have it, you uh, have the blindfold and you, say, you tell them that somebody is going to put their hand in the bag with the blindfold on and take out anything they find in the bag and that they will feel it and say what it is. And you do have to say to the children, now you mustn't, oh, Mary's going to come, all right, you come, Mary, because there's always somebody who wants to come. Now, Mary's going to put her hand in the bag, and she's going to take something out. She's going to feel it and see if she can tell us what it is without looking at it. But, but you have to keep very quiet. Don't tell her what she gets. Because otherwise, all the children shout out, Oh, there, you've got the teaspoon. <laughs> so you explain this, and she feels it and says what she thinks it is. And of course, if she gets it wrong, the children are always tell her. <laughs> and then, who else would like to come and try? So every child who likes comes, puts on the blindfold, puts their hands in the bag, takes out something, and guesses it by touch. And if the same child wants to come several times, that's all right. And some people won't want to try it the first day. They like to see the game two or three times before they want to join in, and that's all right. So for little children, we don't take turns. All right? What are you doing? Well, we're doing up to fives, really, aren't we? 
But if you haven't had them at five, who knows? It's a fun game, any time. And you, for older children, you could have rather smaller objects. I mean, it's very easy to guess a spoon, isn't it? But, uh, now, if, the, if your children really enjoy playing this game as they do, uh, then at some time you need to vary the things because they know things so well that they've done them so often. But don't change the things in the bag without consulting the children first. Mm -hmm. Say, now, next time should I put different things in the bag? I'm going to put different things in the bag. Because you have to warn them. If they're very fond of something, they like to be warned in advance before it's changed. Did you show it to them then before you put it in the bag? Yes, you would have to show them again. If you had 20 very different things, it would be hard to guess. But you could have some things again which were smaller than the first time. We'll play it this afternoon game, okay. yes? All right then.